tallest tree that's underneath his chin, I want you to look immediately to the right of that, and you will see his knuckles. He is holding his jacket just like I am, and you can see the three knuckles right there. Depending upon the light of the day, they, a little bit later, they will totally disappear. So look for those now. Now the other thing we're going to talk about as we go on the walk is the eyes. So I want you to look at the eyes and look at the pupils in those eyes. And we're going to talk about them and how they came to be. As you look at this mountain, there is no paint up there, there is no anything else to make those eyes look different. The sculptor's tools of shadow and light, what make this mountain come alive. So, we're going to start from here. Um, it takes about 30 minutes, it's a nice easy walk. My name is Richard and I'm going to do this walk, so uh, it's going to take us that 30 minutes. We'll stop and start along the way, that's nice and easy. Now, you ended up getting stuck with a retired teacher as your ring. Um, they are not native here, and you'll see that the female has a collar on so we can track them. Uh, there are now about 200 of these goats up around the Black Hills. We have about eight of them that live here. Um, they were a gift from Canada to Custer State Park. The first night, half of them got out. The second night, the other half got out. And they're now wandering wherever they want to go. And as I said, we have about eight of them that live here in the park. Uh, earlier this summer, there were two babies. Their only known predator is the mountain lion. And we have a number of those around here. They are very elusive. It's not likely you will see one, but they are here. So just know that. And, and the mountain goats are, are kind of fun to watch because you may see them here and they'll be right alongside the trail, but you can also see them up on the mountain sometime on, in an unbelievable cliff and they're up there. And we've got photos of them up on top of Washington's head and under Roosevelt's chin and all kinds of places. So, why do we carve the mountain? Because it was there, that makes sense. I mean, anybody else have a guess? Well, well, the people would come. Tourists. So people would come. And that's exactly why they carved them out. In 1923, Doan Robinson was the state historian for South Dakota. He was looking for a way to attract tourists to western South Dakota. South Dakota is divided by the Missouri River right down the middle. Eastern South Dakota, much more farming, more industry, more people does pretty well. Western South Dakota is more ranching, less people, not much industry, and so they were looking for a way to improve that. They thought tourism would be a pretty good way, and judging from our numbers, I'd say they were right. We get about three million visitors, mostly during the summer here every year. And that ranks within the top 10 of national parks around the country. Now, Doan Robinson heard about a fellow that was down in Georgia at Stone Mountain, carving that mountain down there. And he thought that that would be a pretty good idea. So he invited Guts and Borglum out here to take a look at some of the, the Black Hills and see if they couldn't find something that they could use for a, a candidate to do a carving. Well, they started looking over here in the Needles, about 10 miles away. And Borglum looked at that and thought that they were too far gone, too deteriorated to really do a carving. So they spent a couple of weeks, looked around, and found Mount Rushmore. Now, there are several reasons why he chose Mount Rushmore. One was that it is Harney Peak granite. It's very hard, doesn't deteriorate much at all, and it faces southeast. So it has excellent morning sun. The mountain was carved to be viewed between 8 and 10 in the morning. That's when the least amount of shadows are on the faces. But Borglum still had work to do back in Georgia. So he goes back there, continues to work, and gets into an argument with the people running the project. They fire him. He takes his models and pushes them off the top of the mountain. Needless to say, that did not make them very happy back there, and they literally chased him out of Georgia with a sheriff on his tail. <laughs> now, if you have been to Stone Mountain recently, 
The work that is on that mountain is not Borglum's. They hired somebody else to try to finish it. He messed it up. They blew it off the mountain, and what is there today was done in the 60s and 70s.